There's one part when it comes to passive investing that I often have trouble explaining, and it's how to get away from falling for the narrative of investing and the narrative of returns and particular stocks or other styles of investing. And the thing is, markets don't have simple stories. Market indexes are very useful for simplifying down what's happening for a quick news report. And with index funds, it's also a handy way to relate that back to your own portfolio. If a market index is up, your holdings mirroring that index are also up. But just because we can boil it down to a monosyllabic summary of the action for the day or year or whatever, up, down, flat, doesn't mean that it's a simple lever someone out there is pushing, though we'd like to think of it that way. We want to think of it that way. We're comforted by the fairy tales of causation in the news. Condition X happened, therefore event Y happened. It tickles the part of your brain that wants to recognize patterns and fill in the next part. Here's a condition. What's going to follow on board, pattern engine? But the damned thing of it is, sometimes there are causal connections, and often there aren't. If it was just totally random noise, we might be able to give into it, but it's not. There are some really plausible sounding stories out there, explanations so great that they can explain market moves in all directions. The stock market is a complex system. It's made up of people, and computers pretending to be people, all acting out their own interests and reasons. Many are only looking at one or two particular companies versus trading a large index. Some are long-term investors unconcerned with day-to-day -day moves. Some don't look at the news or events or anything external to the market, making decisions based solely on the trading activity they see other people doing. I think it would be a really interesting project to one day survey everyone who made a trade and find out why they made the trade that they did. I suspect you would find almost none aligned with the headline in the news that day, market falls on worries over capital controls in China or whatever. Instead, it would be a thousand different stories that vary from an automatic investment plan to what they had for breakfast to responding to commentary someone else made. The market average is made up of hundreds of stocks being traded by millions of people around the world, each with their own lives and stories and perception filters. And even though we'll all average out to a single, simple result up down or flat. It is not because of a single simple cause. It reminds me of that quote from Men in Black. A person is smart, a kind, compassionate being. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals. One thing I try to explain over and over again when talking about index investing is how, to, is how hard it is to outsmart the market consistently. The whole point is to try to shut out the non-actual noise, to avoid forced errors and stick with a consistent, easy strategy, and then move on with your life. It's a very difficult thing to do because you have to have some kind of faith in the markets. You have to turn off your pattern seeker. One of the worst things that can happen to a new investor is to make a decision based on some piece of trivial news and then make money based on that. Because then it's nearly impossible to turn off the competitive, outthinking, outguessing pattern interpretation engine. At a library talk I gave recently, I had a number of questions from the audience that I didn't do a very good job of shutting down. Things like recent articles about negative interest rates and how that would affect a passive strategy, or what the cause of Black Monday was in 1987. But the fact that the questions were coming in the first place means I wasn't doing a good job of explaining that passive, control-what-can-be-controlled philosophy. To try to explain it again in a slightly different way, there are a few good reasons why the passive approach is a smart one. In other words, why active investing is hard. The first is lifestyle. It requires effort and expertise to be an active investor. The second, the evidence. Even the experts do not have good odds of outperforming when picking stocks, so... Why do you presume that you would? And the third is that things are non-linear. The links between the putative causes and investment returns can be very non-linear and non-obvious. For point number three, this is the thing I think a lot of people are missing on why it's just so difficult to be an active investor and outperform. There's the efficient market side of it. The market is made up of people who with the same information you have, so a news article about something, negative interest rates or employment or whatever, is difficult to use to get an edge. How much of that were people already expecting? 
How much will affect future business activity, and how much of that will affect future stock and bond returns? It's a big jump from that initial article to actually changing the price of what you would pay for an investment in an intelligent way. There's also the complexities of the connection between the real world and the stock market at play. Manish Prabhrai has a fancy slideshow about this, but it's pretty easy to pull examples out of a hat from the past. There have been many inventions where it has been easy to say this is going to change people's lives and be absolutely correct. Automobiles, airplanes, genetics, microchips, the internet, cell phones, these have all undoubtedly been wildly successful inventions that have changed the lives of billions of people. And none of that knowledge has been good enough to help you make money as an investor. Even if you knew for sure, even if you traveled back in time with the absolute certainty that in a few decades' time, the sky would be filled with jetliners, the pockets of the passengers filled with devices laden with microchips, and the roads choked so full of cars that a decent marathon runner could jog from the suburbs to downtown faster than a car could take the highway. Even then you would be hard-pressed to make money from that knowledge. Most of the car companies in the early phases of that revolution went bust. Airlines go bust so often it's a joke amongst investors. There's been one big winner in the cell phone industry, and it's one of the companies that started off selling computers. The internet did indeed change our lives, but it also led to a big stock bubble and collapse, showing the importance of higher-level thinking. Indeed, many of the would-be investors and traders of the time were faced directly with the evidence of the internet's impact as they placed their trades online and the new discount brokerages that became available. They could not ignore the impact the internet was making or how fast it was growing. So many of them thought the same thing and bought the same stocks, leading to the bubble, which blew up and cost many of them a lot of money. It's not enough to know the first part of the story, but also look at what the other investors, humans and computers, are doing. What's priced into a stock? What's a real opportunity? What's a bubble brewing? 3D printing, medical cannabis, stem cells, solar energy, machine learning, self-driving cars, mother-fucking fusion. These may be the next revolutions in our lives. Even if you correctly forecast the coming changes, turning that insight into money by way of the complex non-linear investment market is so very hard. It's not the simple cause and effect relationship the news headlines would have you believe. So a final story. There was a physicist and he had a cat and he wanted to know how it worked. So he took it apart and he had a non-working cat. Living things are chaotic and complex and it's very difficult to precisely map how all the inputs lead to all the outcomes. And the stock market is a living thing. You can easily share in its growth as a passive investor or try to outsmart it but that latter part is easier said than done.